Obviously, I didn't uh, actually get to know him until in the 80s. Oh. He left home and didn't come back. Did Nobody he... knew what he was. Was it to play ball? To or play ball. But you didn't know that. Your family didn't know that. Yes, they knew, but it was something that I didn't know until I was, you know, like a teenager or something like that. Oh. Was your dad a big athlete? No. My dad was not an athlete at all, as far as I know. But my brother did tell me that my dad was the only person that he couldn't strike out. Really? So he evidently did a lot of tribal scenes at home before well, you apparently came home. Right, played, so he played with a... We have oh, some sweets. With a small They're team. They're mid interview. He played with an uh, all-white team in Potosi. Your brother did, right. Lefty. Right. Which was unusual, right? So he played, yeah, at that time. So I think he played with various teams, you know, like if they needed an extra player or something, he played with them. And uh, somehow I think the word got out how well he pitched in the uh, Kansas City game. Yeah, but were you <clears throat> old? He played with them, I think, from 42 to 51. Right. From what I read, and right. you were born in thirty-five. So, did you go to his games? Did the family go? I never did see any of his games. Really? Did anybody? You might have just been. Well, might have been too hard to get there. You were all in Potosi. Well, he was. We left Potosi when I was like three years old, four and years you old, home? and he was gone. We went to Mexico, so that's where I went to high school. <laughs> to high school. Nobody knew where he was until probably in the 80s. I found him in Kansas City in the 80s. I went there to, uh, to interview him. Now, how did you pick that pose of Lefty? Did it come from your head? I had a photograph, a black and white photograph. Mm -hmm. so that was that's what taken I worked from. at the time, because we're going to be sure to get a close-up, too, mm -hmm. of Lefty's face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you paint him as towering, and boy, has that guy got, he looks really strong. Like his, <laughs> his femur, his thigh muscle, he's got it. And your dad couldn't, your dad was the only one, you said, who could return the that's tape? What, that's what, that he could hit, that could hit his pitch. Oh. Because they said his, he had a wicked, was it fastball? I don't remember what I said on this. And they said when he was in the groove, one of his curveballs was just unstoppable. But your dad could... He could hit it. <laughs> oh, goodness. He knew it. Yeah, a wicked fastball and a curveball that, when he was in his groove, was, quote, virtually unstoppable. Mm, I don't remember reading that. It was in, uh, it was in one of those letters, uh, or maybe it was in the Kansas City Star story. Mm -hmm. Have you been to the Negro Leagues Museum? I was there for the opening. Oh, you were? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was there then. Oh, he was there too. Right, right. Wow. He was there. You know, he roomed with Satchel Page. I didn't oh, know that. Satchel, really? Satchel Page was his mentor. Really? Mm -hmm. And yeah. did they stay close over the years? Do you know? Uh, of course, I Satchel know. went on, you just never Satchel know. Satchel Page moved around so much, I guess that's mm. why they called him Satchel. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Packing his bags and stuff. I never knew so where it came from. <laughs> why not? They bought they bought him a house in Kansas City, so he would stay there. Huh. That's Is how he, he stayed with the landlords, right? Oh, did they do that for your no, brother? No, no. Satchel Page was more nice. More phenomenal than I yeah. guess I'm well known. Was there a bitterness to your brother that he hadn't gone further in the leagues? If he did, he never told me. We said he didn't complain. No, he didn't tell me. And was he kind of quiet and closed up? He's probably yeah. honored that you wanted to talk to him. Well, he was kind of quiet, but. He talked to me, you know. Yeah. yeah. Did you call each other brother? And oh yeah. 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 He used to write to me. I got several letters he's written to me. Really? Mm -hmm. But it was more about how, how you did. How he was getting on. Family. You know what's going on. Like he must yeah. have appreciated you reaching out to him. Well, I don't know. I didn't give that much thought. You know, I just, yeah. you know, I wanted to write, and so 
Is your your book, is it one of those back burner things that you hope to get to? Or? Yeah, I've got two or three books going that oh, yeah? I hope to finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I do have. But uh, I do hope to finish it. I've got people who want to help me with it, and uh, mm-hmm. perhaps I'll get it done one day. Mm-hmm. So when people ask you to describe yourself, you say, I'm an artist, or do you say other things too? I'm a painter, well, I'm a I sculptor. never tell people I'm an artist. Yeah? What do you say? Like somebody you says, say, hey, Joe, what do you do? Well, mm-hmm. I say, well, I paint and sculpt on the side. That's what I like to do. <laughs> I don't, you know, I never really consider myself an artist until other artists start buying my paint. In my work, then I say, well, maybe I am not. But they do, right? Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. Janet yeah. has some beautiful yeah. pieces of yours yeah. all over the house. I say that's a compliment when other artists buy your art. <laughs> <laughs> you know, artists. Yeah. How many yeah. years were you in the post office? 38. Wow. I and retired in 06. Good for mm-hmm. you. And you live now in the city? I live in Cal- Berkeley.